Jamie Soto, you're being charged to possession of Sanax, uh, B-A-R-S, I don't know what that is, what is it? Bars. Xanax, Xanax bars, how okay. they refer to it. Xanax bars. All right, I understand you're eligible for hotel service. Yes. Yeah, uh, no objection, she has no priors. She's being charged for hotel, which is improper, it should just be one count. Ms. Soto, are you working? Yes. How much money are you making a week, approximately? Approximately about 200 bucks a week. Okay, and do you own any property of value? A house, a car, a bank account, significant amounts of jewelry? Yes. What do you own? <laughs> I own a lot of jewelry, all right, okay. as well as a Go ahead. car. Well, how, 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 how much you, would you say your jewelry is worth? <laughs> well, it's not a joke, you know. We are not in we are not in a club now. Okay, but if you know, hey, well, you see, you know, we are not in a, we are not in a club. Be serious about it. I'm serious about oh, it. You're being you very, I can see you're serious, all right. You just made me laugh. I apologize. It's all right. How much is your jewelry worth? It's worth a lot of money. Like what? Like Rick Ross. Huh? It's worth money. Have you had any kind of drugs in the in the last twenty four hours? Actually, no. Actually, no. Judge, I'll, I'll make it easy for the court. Respectfully, <laughs> I'll accept the appointment at this time. No, no, I'm going to appoint you because you own a lot of substantial amounts of jewelry. You can go and sell your jewelry, jewelry for a private attorney. What is the standard bond? It should be. It's going to be no PTS. Okay, five thousand on count one. And then the rest should be ROR. Oh, yeah. This thing's also requesting a referral to Division 51. Because she has no problem. Count one would be 5,000. Throw our cost found. Count two would be ROR. So this is requesting ROR on count two through 26. And refer to Division 51. Bye bye. Adios. <laughs> Come back, ma'am. Come back. Come back. Give me the paper again. Count one would be ten thousand. Are you serious? I am serious. Adios. <gasps> Come back again. Come back again. Bring her back again. I believe I heard you saying to. Yes, I did. I'm not going to do it. I believe you. Did you say? Actually, I did. you say that? Yes, sir. I did. Oh, you did say that? I'm not I find you in direct criminal contempt. 30 days in the county jail. All right, please. Uh, did you see it? On uh, August 6th, on a probation violation, you entered a plea of not guilty. Now I got a question for you. Uh, does that mean I still can't drink on probation? Really? Okay, okay. Re you really, okay, well, you really asked that question when I, when I just said he, I don't think he has an alcohol problem. Did you take your dumb pills today? Judge Chickenetti of Painesville, Ohio, or Judge Chick as he goes by, sees 30 to 40 cases a day, but it's his unique method of sentencing that has turned him into a viral sensation. And now to this story, an Ohio judge defending an unusual punishment. Gave one teen a punishment she definitely will never forget. 18-year-old Victoria Bascom takes a cab ride that stiffs the driver in the end. The teenager who skipped out on a cab fare to a long walk of shame. Just a few months ago, one of the judge's latest sentences got international media attention. When 18-year-old Victoria Bascom was given a choice, spend 30 days in jail or walk 30 miles. I've never been to jail and I don't want to go to jail. I'm kind of upset about this sentence, you know, because I'm thinking I was going to go on and have to just pay a fine. I end up almost getting jail time, so I guess I'm kind of lucky he gave me this option. But this kind of, um, creative sentencing is not new to the judge. He's been doing it for years. Very humiliating. Very embarrassing. After being arrested for soliciting a prostitute, this man chose public humiliation over jail time. Is this tough enough punishment that you're never, ever going to be doing something I, like this again? Yes, absolutely. This teen stole porn from an adult bookstore. I'm thankful that Judge Chicken Eddie gave me an opportunity instead of a jail time. 
This woman was caught on surveillance tape walking into a Burger King and pepper spraying one of the workers in the face. Her sentence? The judge gave the defendant a choice, either serve time or get sprayed herself with what she thought was pepper spray. And you couldn't use a real pepper spray because you, no, you can't injure somebody. And now I am bucking heads with those law professors <laughs> when, I, when I use real pepper spray. Now we're getting into the cruel and unusual. Did the victim get the vengeance in that case, given that it wasn't real pepper spray? Yeah, may not be what you wanted, but it's all that I could do as the law permit. The rates of repeat offenders are much lower in his courtroom than the national average. When you talk about state prisons and federal prisons, their problems started way back here with my court, with municipal courts, with the minor offenses. Most people don't start out with a felony case. We have to stop them from going further at the beginning stages. Uh, then otherwise it escalates. They get in jail, they get smarter, smarter criminally. And as they get smarter criminally, the offenses become greater. On the docket for today, two cases, one involving a bicycle theft, and the other, a case that hit a little close to home for the judge. Who's being silly? Oh, who's being silly? As a pet owner, he was extremely upset about how Alyssa Morrow treated her sit bull mix. I'm a vomit reading the report. This is how animal control found moose in a house that can only be described as belonging to a hoarder. Morrow says she left him there for just a week. She's in court today, pleading guilty to animal neglect and cruelty. You know, I, I can't interpret the feelings of a dog, but boy, if dogs could tell you how they felt. Abandoned. Oh yeah, and scared, and frightened, and sick. Well, maybe you should get a little taste of that, but I'm gonna let you have a choice here. And the choice is I want you to live like moose. And in order to do that, I want you to go down to the county dump, to the landfill. And I want them to find the stinkiest, smelliest, god-awful odor place they can find in that dump. And I want you to sit there for eight hours tomorrow. Just think what you did to that dog, why you smell the odor. If you puke, you puke. Understand? Morrow has the choice of either choosing to do this alternative sentence or spend 90 days in jail. She agrees to go to the dump. Okay. See you at the dump tomorrow. We'll get to the dump later. But first, the case of the disappearing bike. The defendant, Jordan Walsh, showed up to court with his mother. All right, Jordan, you stole a bike, walked into a garage, took a bike, and, and rode it. Well, Your Honor, I know, I know Mr. Walsh uh, takes full responsibility for this. For the punishment, and I think to get your attention that it's not to be done again. As I always do, you're going to have the, the choice of 60 days of jail. You can avoid that by 10 days of community work service. So you stole a bike and you rode a bike, so that's what you're going to do again here Tuesday in the fair parade. The judge has made him an offer he can't refuse. He ordered Walsh to ride a bike on behalf of a local charity in a parade the following week. You worried about going to jail? Yeah. 60 days, I, when I heard that, I, my heart just dropped. And the guy that got his bike stolen is surprisingly supportive. I didn't want the kid's life to be ruined because he stole a bike, but, you know, he needs to pay for what he did. You know, embarrass him a little bit. You know, it's better than him sitting in jail. He rode the bike all along the parade route. I think it's better than going to jail because I can show people that I can do better in my community. For Alyssa Morrow, her second chance came the day after court at the local dump. And she was given the ironic job of picking up garbage. Girl, not the best outfit choice. I know, the shoes, I thought about it. <laughs> I couldn't find my other shoes and I was already running late, so. For the next eight hours, Morrow must spend her day, just like Moose spent close to a week in filth. I probably don't think I'd be here, but I'd rather be here than jail. Can't complain. The good news is that Moose is recuperating wonderfully and is now up for adoption. You will see how close this was to a man and a father and a public servant laying dead. While Assistant District Attorney Richard Vans gave his opening statement, and then he says, I'm going to kill myself because I'm going to go to the pen and jail for the rest of my life. Interesting words to say if he hadn't done something. Mumbling was heard from 17 year old Corey Webb, and it continued into the first witness testimony. So the judge stopped trial. Learning things out during the middle of a trial when the jury 
While the judge reprimanded the teen, Webb asked if he could fire his attorney, W. Lloyd. The judge told Webb he had to either keep Lloyd or represent himself. The teen chose to keep his attorney. Smith County Attention Center employee Glenda Murray took the stand first, recalling the night of the shooting, saying, I was so scared because I was so afraid our officer was down. After her testimony, the court broke for lunch. Right as the jury was ushered out, as you see in this video, Webb unbuckles his pants, walks over to a trash can, and urinates in court. The judge had this to say to Webb. I don't know how you were raised, but peeing in a trash can in a state district courtroom is inappropriate behavior. This is the second conversation we're having. There won't be a third. After recess, trial resumed and Webb made a big decision. He decided to plead guilty to shooting at the intake officer at the attention center on July 23, 2010. First caught on tape, an extraordinary courtroom outburst. Not from the defendant or from the victim's family, but from the judge himself, outraged by a convicted killer's actions in the courtroom. And ABC's Marcy Gonzalez has more on what set him off and what he's now saying about it. Marcy, good morning. Good morning, Dan and Bianca. He says this was the most heinous, cold-blooded murder case he'd ever encountered. But this morning, the judge is speaking out to ABC News, explaining that wasn't the only reason he had such an extreme reaction. You gutted him like a fish in that apartment, too. You were relentless. You stabbed, you stabbed, you stabbed, you stabbed, you stabbed until he was dead. This judge unleashing on convicted murderer Camille Gamet, the 31-year-old in court being sentenced after a Michigan jury found her guilty of killing her boyfriend. I also remember the cries of help that he screamed as you plunged that knife in and out of his body. Gamet smirking, laughing, and rolling her eyes as the victim's family testified, setting Judge John McBain off. And you're going to shut your mouth or I'm going to have some duct tape put on it. Well, he attacked We'll wait here for a moment till we can get her quiet. Some questioning his extreme reaction. Judges are supposed to be above that to some degree. They're supposed to be able to control their emotions a little better than the rest of us. Camilla pleaded not guilty, claiming she stabbed Marcel Hill in self-defense. Mostly everything was lies. There was a little bit of truth, but mostly I was convicted off of lies. But it was the disrespect she showed towards the victim's family that McBain says sparked the outrage he feels was justified. Sometimes judges are required to take firm and definite steps to get control of the proceedings and to ultimately to make the person standing in front of them understand the full accountability of their actions. McBain doing just that, sentencing Gamut to life in prison. I agree with the family. I hope you die in prison as well. You know, if this was a death penalty state, you'd be getting the chair. 13303. Okay, Mr. Booth, I have a question for you. I yes, ma'am. Did you go to Nautilus for middle school? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I'm sorry to see you there. I always wondered what happened to you, sir. Oh, my goodness. This is the nicest kid in middle school. Oh, my goodness. He was the best kid in middle school. I used to play football with him and all the kids. And look what has happened. I'm so sorry. To oh, see my you. goodness. Mr. Booth, I hope you were able to change your ways. Good luck to you. Oh, my goodness. What's sad is how old we've become. Oh my goodness. Good luck to you, sir. I hope you're able to come out of this okay and just lead a lawful life. In 2003, Robert Blake was in court after he allegedly shot his wife, Bonnie Lee Bakley, outside an Italian restaurant in Los Angeles. Okay, we're back on the record in the Blake Caldwell matter. Outside, a court TV camera crew prepares for a live shot. Our camera crews were set up. They were waiting for our reporter to come out and report on Robert Blake when all of a sudden the shooting begins. The cameras pick up this whack job who is chasing this lawyer around the outside of the courtroom shooting him. So here we have a guy who's upset with the lawyer. 
Not an unusual occurrence, but he decides he's going to do more than tell lawyer jokes. And here's the lawyer trying to hide behind the smallest tree you've ever seen while this man is firing off shots at him. The guy got shot like four or five times, yet he didn't fall. It was very, very unique and very horrific as you were sure this attorney was going to die. And then, to wrap up this bizarre event, the guy with the gun just sort of says something to him and kind of walks away from him. The shooter was William Stryer, a disgruntled client of the victim, attorney Gerald Curry. Curry's handling of a probate trust fund had pushed the already unstable Stryer over the edge. But miraculously, Curry survived the shooting with minor injuries. This kind of thing where it always happens to someone else. You think, well, this is the thing you see on TV, but this time it happened to me. Stryer was eventually sentenced to life in prison plus 25 years. All rise. The Tioga County Court of Common Pleas is now in session. The Honorable David L. Fury presiding. Please be seated. Uh, this is the case of the State of Ohio against Thomas M. Lane, case 12C58. Here this morning. On behalf of the state of Ohio is Prosecutor James Flays. Mr. Flays, could you uh, please introduce your table? Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, to my left is uh, Nicholas Berling, Joggett County Assistant Prosecutor, Mark Bartolotta, Joggett County Assistant Prosecutor, and from the Lake County Prosecutor's Office, Karen Colwell. Thank you, and you can make it from where you, where you sit. What? You can make it seated where you, where you are, if you would. Take your time. She did not provide me with that information, no. She, she never provided with you. Excuse me, hope so. Your Honor, excuse me for a second. I need, I need some time. should reflect that the defendant is slouching over to the side and acts like he's sleeping. His, his breath appears to be quite normal, doesn't appear to be labored in any way. Is that a fair assessment, sir? Yes, it's not sir. labored in any manner. Yes, um, does he appear to be doing anything to you other than sitting in that chair? No, Your Honor. A remarkable uh, change. Thank you. Anything, um, Mr. Thompson? Mm -hmm. Yes, Your Honor. I would ask. 
asked that it be kept in the holding cell. So if issues come up, I can't address them with them. No, this is what I'm saying. Take me back to my sale, man. I don't want to be a part of this part. This is a part. Why do you want to be part? It started as an average day in the courtroom of Oklahoma District Judge Donald Thompson when court reporter Lisa Foster suddenly noticed the dapper and distinguished judge making an unusual noise. It would be silent in the courtroom and he would start in on this pumping sound. Now you're sitting there in court and this is what you hear. Listen. And then you hear it again. Turns out that noise came courtesy of Judge Donald Thompson's penis pump. While he sat on the bench, he apparently felt it necessary to use his penis pump. You know, he wasn't just doing these things in traffic court. There were was a couple of murder trials he was on. If someone's life is in the balance, you're looking at life in prison, and this guy is playing around with a penis pump? Judge Thompson used his device during three separate trials between 2000 and 2003. And when I stepped into the courtroom, the judge had the pump in his lap, and I saw his penis. You know, I mean, he was so blatant about it that he would leave the bench and leave the thing there. As he started doing it more, it was almost like he got careless. You know, that's how they got him. A cop came around because they were wondering what it was, and they saw it, and they photographed it during a recess. People know too much now about what goes on behind those robes. And shall we say he had too much time on his hands. Thompson was tried in 2006, and the court handed down guilty verdicts on four counts of indecent exposure.